All right. So, uh, how 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 can we use the pH electrode in real potentiometric measurement? So, uh, this picture copy from the first slide, right? You need two electrodes for pH for potentiometry. You need reference electrode and you need the indicator electrode. Your reference electrode now is going to be maybe silver silver chloride electrode, right, or the, your calomel. And your indicator electrode is now your glass membrane electrode. So you need two electrodes uh, and then connect with the voltmeter. But uh, in real life, having two electrodes might be a little bit too complicated. So people combine these two electrodes into one instrument or one piece of equipment. So that's why we call this pH probe. We call this pH probe. This probe of, I call it pH combination probe because this probe combines reference and glass membrane electrodes into one piece of equipment. This is the pH probe. So let's see how pH probes work. So this is the magnif magnified image of the pH probe. So let's uh, follow me together. Uh, so this is the probe, right? You are external, the, your external exterior of the probe is going to be your glass membrane your glass membrane which is responsive with your proton in your sample your sample is the external solution of course and your, your internal solution is going to be maybe here like 0.1 molar hydrochloric saturated with the silver chloride so you have your glass membrane here for your indicator electrode whereas your reference electrode your reference electrode is inside it. Your reference, let's see here, silver and silver, silver chloride is going to be your reference electrode connect with each other. And the rest is like other component. Yeah, you need the cap, of course, you need some air inlet and you need and you need the liquid for your KCL thing. You need the liquid for your proton internal solution thing. And yeah, silver chloride pairs, that's the reference electrode. Of course, this is the, yeah, I'm not gonna like ask you to like, what is it? You're, like to point out and then what is it? I'm not gonna ask you, I'm just gonna let you like, you should be able to know that this pH probe consists of two electrodes, the glass membrane electrodes and then your reference electrodes. But the question is that, how can you measure the membrane potential? Because uh, if you realize, if you realize this membrane electrode doesn't have any electrical connection yet, this is just a bare uh, membrane, but you don't, you haven't done any electrical connection yet. So the way that the people manufacturing the pH meter to make the electrical connection is that you need the third reference electrode you need the third reference electrode. No, you need the second reference electrode, which is the third electrode, sorry. Yeah, so if I want to write the shorthand notation for this pH probe, you're gonna get something like this. So this is the salt bridge. So your left, your left hand side is gonna have your outer reference electrode, which is maybe this part, your outer reference electrode. You have again silver solid, silver chloride solid, and then your chloride as your outer reference electrode. What about your right hand side? Your right hand side is going to have, of course, your proton from your sample and proton from your internal solution divided with your membrane, your glass membrane. But now you need your inter inner reference electrode. So to connect, your glass membrane with your uh, other electrical equipment, you need the second reference electrode to just connect it. Why, uh, it may think, why don't you use platinum? Because like platinum may be like uh, not too inner and your, it, the, the potential of platinum is not really constant, although it's inner, but it's, it, it's uh, electrode potential is not constant. So that's why they use second reference electrode to make the electrical connection instead. Again, 
your pH probe now consists of three electrodes, but still can be divided into two sides, your left hand side and your right hand side. Your left hand side has only outer reference electrode. Your familiar uh, function of it is to measure the potential against it. Silver, silver chloride, let's say. Your internal, uh, your right hand side is gonna have your glass membrane. Your glass membrane divided, dividing between your external solution and internal solution with the difference concentration of protons. And you need the electrical connection. So you put the second reference electrode, which in this case, they use silver, silver chloride electrode. And they call it inner reference electrode. But its function is just to make the electrical connection with the glass membrane without shifting its uh, potential. So uh, to see like what is the E-cell that you can read from this system, so let's write it. So first, from, from the first slide, you know that the cell potential is going to be the difference between the indicator electrode potential minus the reference electrode potential and plus some junction potential that we cannot eliminate, but we can minimize it. And your indicator electrodes now potential. Now it's going to be your membrane potential plus your internal reference potential. And your EREF here is going to be your outer reference potential. And then you can combine the terms together. Your internal reference potential, your external reference potential, and your junction potential, we can assume it to be constant. We can assume it to be constant. And then uh, your membrane potential, we can expand it into new constant minus 0.0592 pH, or sometimes we put V the pH. So we combine every constant together. So at the end, you get E cell is equal to constant minus 0.0592 V the pH. You're not gonna do the calculation here, but what I want, what the point that I want to make here is that E cell is. Uh, linear has the linearly relationship with the pH. If you plot between E cell and pH, you're going to get the straight line. And your slope is going to be like 0 0.0592 multiplied by some beta and your constant. But in real life, we find the constant and the beta from calibration. So how to do calibration? So in every pH meter, we can do some uh, something called pH meter calibration. So you're gonna purchase the buffer solution. Yeah, we don't really like want to prepare the buffer for calibration by ourselves because we don't know if we are accurate or not. So we purchased or we bought the chemicals, the buffer from the company. So let's see, we need maybe two or three buffers like this. Yeah, I put it from Metro Toledo. So I, they use three buffers pH 7, pH 4.01, and 9.21. And the step is that you take the pH probe from the aqueous solution, aqueous storage solution, and you put it in the pH step in the pH 7, and you measure the cell potential. And then you change it to pH 4, and then measure the cell potential. And then finally, you change it to the pH 9.2 step. 9.21 and then measure the cell potential. And from this point, you can plot the relationship between the E cell and pH. This process is uh, automatically done by the pH meter. And you get this three number and you're gonna get the line, this line, which is your calibration curve for your pH meter for the day. And since your pH meter may be very day to day, so that's why we, sometimes we calibrate it every day, sometimes we calibrate it every three hours, something like this, but it is the easy procedure to done to make sure that your pH meter give, you, give us the accurate value. All right, so this is the step to calibrate the pH meter. There, and there are many forms of the pH meter. If you go to the lab, this is, you're gonna see something called benchtop pH meter. So you have the pH, you have the pH, the readout, the pH uh, readout here, and you can read the pH from here, and you have the pH probe here, 
and they are connect with each other. So the, and you plug the pH probe in your sample solution to read the pH. So that's the benchtop. If you go to the field, like for example, if someone, uh, some people here take the environment uh, measure and then you want to go to measure the pH of the water in the river, maybe you can use the handheld pH meter. There are many forms as well. This may be, this benchtop form may be miniaturized to get uh, this, like the remote control size, the palm size, you can carry it with your hand. And then you have the smaller pH probe here, and then you can plug it into your sample. Or you can get the, uh, the smaller uh, form, you can have, you can have this, like the strip. All you have to do is maybe you can drop the water or your sample on the on the area here, which is glass membrane, of course, and then it will give you the pH rate out. And if you work with biological stuff, maybe you need to measure the pH in your cell or in your brain, not your brain, but your sample, like something like that. And if your area is very small, then you may need the micro electrode. So this is very small, like smaller from this to this uh, glass membrane electrode, maybe in the maybe centimeter diameter. And this, but this one gonna be like micron size. Maybe someone want to measure uh, the pH meter of some specific size in the rat brain, so they use this. So uh, this is the several designs of pH meter. So the last topic of today is. Uh, there are some errors in using glass membrane electrode to measure the pH. So what are those errors? There are six kinds of the errors. That's going to be in the, in the table in the page 16. That's the last thing that we're going to study today. So the first error is called acid error. What is it? So if you have your acid sample, your acid sample will have very low pH, right? And then if it's very concentrated acid, like maybe concentrated uh, uh, hydrochloric or sulfuric, you're going to have a lot of hydronium ion or proton. You get a lot of proton. But your pH glass membrane electrode has, has a limited glass porosity. So you have a limited site to bind with your protons. So it turns out that some of your proton cannot be seen by your glass membrane. So in other words, less proton is seen by the glass membrane. So your pH rate out is gonna be too high. Your pH rate out is gonna be too high. So we call this acid error. For example, if your sample has the pH of one, maybe you're gonna get some value of like 1.2, something like this. This is, this is because uh, some of your proton cannot be seen by your glass membrane. Your glass membrane has limited uh, pores to bind with your protons. So this is acid error. The second error, we call it alkaline error. Alkaline error occurs in the opposite side of the acid error. If your sample has very high pH, like maybe pH 13 or something, and it has very high sodium ion because now uh, the candidate to bind with the glass membrane electrode is not only proton but also sodium although sodium can buy uh, worse but it still can bind if your sample has high ph it means that you have very low concentration of protons and so now your proton your all of your proton may bind with your glass membrane but since there are so many available, so many availability of the site to bind with your proton, but you don't have proton to bind. So now some of your sodium may bind in your pores. So your sodium ion can substitute the glass pores in addition to the protons. So it turns out that more ion can be seen by your glass membrane. So, and your, your, your glass membrane is not know whether that ion is proton or sodium. So it's gonna be, res it's gonna respond the same because the sharp is plus one is the same. So your pH rate now is gonna be too low. Like 
if your sample is PS13, maybe it repeats your value, like maybe 12.5, something like that. And we call this alkaline error. It occurs when you get, when you have uh, the sample with very high pH and very high sodium concentration. That's the second one. The third error is we call it dehydration error. I told you, right, that the ion, ex the ion exchange process will occur only in the gel, gel part of the glass membrane. So you have to stick the glass membrane in the aqueous solution and keep it. But if your glass membrane is too dry, then it takes time to re-establish re the gel and the ion exchange. So you're gonna get the unstable, unstable rate of four. Why? Maybe you have to wait for half an hour or uh, 10 minutes. But if some people doesn't know that, if some someone doesn't know that, then he or she can may take that rate out and your rate out is gonna be unstable. It may change for a while, and, but, they, but a user doesn't know. So this is called dehydration error. It will give you the dehydration error. So basically your glass membrane is not in the gel form. So you can uh, have the ion exchange equilibrium. So it takes time to reestablish the things. So you get the unstable rate of. The fourth uh, race, the fourth error, we call it junction potential drift. So uh, remember that uh, you have the internal solution in your pH meter, but you are, we, we always assume that your internal solution has the same uh, concentration all the time. But if your internal solution has the sh shifted or have the change composition, then it's going to change your liquid junction potential, which is going to shift your cell potential and your rate out is also unstable as well. So that's why we call it junction potential drift. The last two errors deals with the calibration. For example, if you calibrate your, temp your pH meter at one temperature, and then you take it out and measure the pH meter of your sample in other lab, which might be not like air conditioned, which may be like hotter or higher temperature. <clears throat> so that with this uh, temperature, which uh, with this temperature change, it will shift your calibration curve. So your calibration curve that you get from your calibration is not valid anymore. Your slope and your intercept is not valid anymore. So your pH meter, your pH rate out is not gonna be correct. And we call this error temperature drift. So if your condition change in terms of temperature, you need to recalibrate your pH meter. Like if you are on the 12th floor that you, we, we air condition our lab on the, all the time, but you want to take the pH to the 14th floor for, to the organic lab when they don't turn on the air condition, then uh, you're going to need to recalibrate the pH again at that, uh, in that lab. You cannot use the same calibration curve. The last uh, error is that if your pH meter maybe uh, if your pH buffer here may be expired or if you contaminate the pH buffer, then of course your calibration is not valid anymore and your readout is going to be shifted. And we call this calibration of calibration standard deviation, the deviation of the calibration standard. Your standard is not correct, so how's your sample is going to be correct in terms of the pH rate out? Something like that. So these are like six uh, types of errors in, in the pH measurement. There may be more than six if you go to read the textbook, but these are six uh, major errors. <clears throat>